Okay, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. In my continuing episode on making the transition from Windows 10 to Linux Mint, I'm going to be talking about a really, really important subject today, and that is security. Now, if you've not seen my original video on how I show you how to install Oracle Virtual Machine on your computer so that you can install Linux Mint, uh, go ahead and check that out in the description below, or I will leave a card up here for you to go to. So with that being said, go ahead and start up your Oracle Virtual Machine and start up your Linux Mint, which I've already done. Now, once you have it up, let's go ahead and make this full screen, okay? Now, before I get into this uh, security thing, um, everybody knows who's ever used Windows that it is, uh, basically it's not the best when it comes to uh, security, okay? However, I do wanna dispel some myths when it uh, comes to Linux, okay? Uh, the first being is one of the biggest myths is that Linux doesn't get viruses or malware and so forth. And that is completely false. Now, any system, regardless of the security that they tout, every system can be broken into and every system has vulnerabilities, okay? Even systems such as Apple Mac OS, which is actually based upon Unix, is actually Unix underneath, actually, um, it also can get malware, viruses, and so forth. And the same goes for Linux. And if you don't believe me, you know, all you have to do is look at your Android device. The Android operating system actually runs on top of the Linux kernel. And here just recently, there was a report saying there's 10 million uh, malware infected phones. So it is possible for Linux based systems to get infected with malware and viruses. However, the likelihood of that is much, much less than it is on Windows because of the way that it's actually built. And I did do a video previously where I talked about Linux Mint getting hacked, and uh, you can look at that video below. But overall, Linux Mint is much more secure than Windows. And, you know, Linux is used on billions of devices, including the fastest supercomputers in the world, and including stock, exchange, stock exchanges all around the world, you know, like New York Stock Exchange, Chicago Stock Exchanges, European Stock Exchanges. So they would not run Linux on these systems, especially these supercomputers, if it was not secure. So getting that out of the way, what are some security options that you could put in Linux? Okay. Now, for a lot of people who are Linux users, they don't put any type of antivirus on there, but I am going to show you some options. You know, just in case you want that extra level of security or really, honestly, it's actually just peace of mind, especially if you're coming from the Windows world, you're so used to having some type of antivirus on there. Now, what you want to do is first thing you want to do is start up your uh, software manager. So go to menu, go to administration and go to software manager and you're going to install a couple of things first. So put in your password here. Okay, so you're gonna install first a firewall. I think that's very, very important uh, that you have some type of firewall to help you control uh, the type of internet traffic that comes between your computer and the internet world. And the one I'm gonna show you, it's very simple. It doesn't require hardly any effort for you to set up. So once the software manager comes up, and then after that, I'm gonna show you some antivirus options uh, that you can install on Linux and uh, some setup on there as well. So, um, you know, if I haven't mentioned this before in a virtual machine, um, everything is, at least on my machine, it's everything slower. So uh, just uh, bear with me uh, while that comes up. Okay, uh, now it's up. So the firewall that I wanted to talk about is called GUFW. So what you would do um, and you could search through here and look for it, but it takes a long time. But I'm just telling you, just go up here to your search bar and type in GUFW, press enter, and you will see this utility uh, come up. It's a firewall utility. Okay, there it is, the graphical user interface for UFW. So go ahead and uh, double click on this. 
and you just go ahead and install it and you definitely want to have this on there uh, first as your firewall okay so it's a very small program uh, just go ahead and install it and then I'll show you how to set it up it's very very easy and it's it's actually a really uh, really good firewall I mean I'm I'm surprised how simple it is but it's very uh, powerful as well okay so the GFW GUFW utility is installed so what you need to do is to turn it on and to set it up all you have to do is go to your menu down here and it should be under preferences and you just scroll down there's firewall configuration open that up and I'm just going to show you the very simple way to set it up just type in your password and then uh, once the utility comes up uh, we'll just set it up and just leave it on after that you know you don't you don't really have to uh, go back to this utility unless you want to make some more advanced changes so all you have to do is just turn it on okay that's uh, all you have to do and there's many different profiles and you could set up a lot more options okay but um, I just you know I just stick to the, the very basic one okay uh, so unless you had some really secure complicated network and so forth on there um, I would just do that very simple one. just turn it on and that's it now it's on okay now let's get to the antivirus part of it okay for a lot of people who are in Linux the one that most people are familiar with it's a antivirus program called clam AV and for the majority of any existing viruses or malware and so forth on Linux it's not available you know most of them are not available in the wild what that means is you know on Windows you have viruses and malware anywhere you know on the internet on programs and so forth but for Linux operating systems it's very rare for you to find uh, you know a Linux based virus or uh, malware and so forth um, you know in the same place that you would find on Windows so so with that being said you know there's not a lot of uh, antivirus uh, utilities available let me see if I could find it there. It didn't show up. There it is. So that's uh, Clam AV. The only thing bad about Clam now, it's not, it's not really up to date. And a lot of these Linux-based viruses, vi antivirus systems, they're actually looking for Windows-based viruses. Okay, because a lot of uh, web servers and a lot of servers do run on Linux, and so most of the times these antivirus programs are actually looking for Windows viruses because like I said there's very few uh, you know Linux based viruses or malware out in the wild okay with that being said I don't really recommend this one anymore this clam because it's not updated okay so what I do recommend is you download one that um, I think it's really excellent uh, for Linux and this antivirus program that I'm going to be showing you this will make you feel right at home uh, because it's it's just like what you would put on Windows okay so once your browser starts up all you have to do is look up Komodo okay and whenever that comes up see where it says antivirus just go ahead and click here on antivirus now I've already downloaded and installed this so uh, I'm going to attempt to install it again uh, just so that you could see it okay so um, once this loads up there will be an option for a Linux version and that's very that's not common at all to for you to have a, a full-blown uh, antivirus uh, application uh, for Linux okay so see if you go down here to antivirus there's Linux and there are a few options for you to uh, choose from when it's installing it's really only two options once it comes up so there's a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version but for a lot of people just choose the 64-bit version okay now I've already downloaded it and like I said I've already installed it but let me see if I could try to install it again so then I could walk through it with you so um, it's a very small file too it's not a large file at all 
So it should be under your downloads folder. And there it is, CAV Linux. Okay, and whenever you download files for Linux Mint, it's going to be in a .deb file, so it's not like a .exe like you would get in Windows. Uh, because Linux Mint is actually Debian based, that's why it has the .deb. And what Debian is, is it's a version of Linux, okay, it's a distribution. And it's actually the most, uh, most popular distribution because Ubuntu is based upon Debian and Linux Mint is based upon Ubuntu, so they're all Debian based, okay. So this is very important right here, um, this command right here, I'm going to show you why in a second, okay. So don't be scared, um, I'm going to show you how to do this, okay. And um, I would just copy and paste this command, or actually just, yeah, just leave it there and so, okay. So um, I've already installed it, so I'm going to click on reinstall, okay. So hopefully that will work. And you know, like the way I just did it right now, downloading the program from a website, that's usually not how uh, Linux works. You know, usually you use your software manager and you get it from the repositories. Uh, but you know, not every program is available on the repositories. And sometimes, you know, it's not the most recent version. So you always have options in Linux, okay? And you know, once this finishes installing, um, I'm gonna go through the other steps. So we're just gonna wait until uh, this finishes installing and then I'll show you just uh, quickly how it looks like, but it shouldn't be too complex. And there you see right there, there's the Komodo antivirus shortcut. Okay, so it was installed. Let's go ahead and close it. Now, I would leave this window open because you want to run this command right here, okay? This is a script. But the funny thing is, this program, it'll start even before you actually run anything. You don't even, um, I don't, I'm not even sure if you actually have to run this script. But, see, it just looks exactly the same as you would in Windows. You could do all your setups right here and um, you could set up your scanner settings and stuff. But uh, Komodo recommends that you definitely run this script. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? So this part, you know, might scare you a little bit, but uh, you, you're gonna get used to doing this in some instances, okay? For the most of the times, you're not gonna have to do this, uh, at least if you're not installing a lot of different programs that's outside of the uh, software manager, okay? so. What you would do to run this script right here, you would go to your terminal, which is down here, okay? Now, um, if you are really a newbie and you're scared, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, this one's not too complex, okay? So what you would do is you would highlight this right here, okay? So right click on your mouse, copy, go to this terminal, edit, paste, and just press enter. Okay, um, before you do that, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to put sudo, okay? And sudo is like the super user, so that, uh, it goes back to the security of Linux. I didn't wanna go into de in depth in it, but after you press enter, it's gonna ask for your password. So you put in your password, and that's the password you use to get in your computer. So, and basically what it is, it is just the end user agreement for Komodo and uh, unfortunately, there wasn't an easy way for me to uh, go down to the bottom. But you're going to have to uh, keep pressing enter. Okay. And actually, uh, I think I skipped it, but um, there was actually an option which asked you if you agreed to the license, yes or no. So, and it'll run all of this stuff, all these commands. Okay. And um, I'm not sure why they had this set up because 
it looks like it's fine once you bring it up, okay? But like I said, I, I don't really use uh, any of these antivirus programs uh, for my Linux system. However, uh, I just wanted to show you that there is an option to do it. So once this runs, uh, we're going to run a uh, quick... Okay. And I've already run this before, so... Okay, but it's successfully configured now. I have a feeling that uh, this was already configured when you install it. I think this might have been like an older version of it. That That's my actual feeling, okay? So, let's go ahead and uh, fire this up. And then, you know, you could go ahead and run your first one. We could run a scan. Okay. So, there it is. So, everything is very similar to what you would get in Windows. And so that is basically it. I mean, I, I know a lot of people talk about security on Linux versus Windows, but for just using it on a day-to-day -day basis, that's about it, you know? And like I said, for a lot of Linux users, unless they're running servers or they have some real sensitive information, most Linux users do not have any type of antivirus programs on their systems and if they do it's primarily looking for windows viruses okay because like i said they might be running a server or file sharing that works on multiple operating systems so they don't want a windows virus to get on the linux server and then people download files from it onto their windows machines okay so it might take you a while to get used to that uh, that whole concept of not having an antivirus program on there uh, but you know a uh, one thing that i always want to stress is that the best security that you can have on a, any any of these operating systems that you're using the best security is common sense so uh, use a lot of your common sense uh, for the sites that you visit and especially for things that you download uh, because a lot of these uh, people who are trying to damage your system they're not doing anything really really complex you know a lot of it's like a lot of social social engineering okay so uh, they will send you an email that looks very professional and official but it's actually a virus okay or actually some type of malware hidden in a link and so those are more common in how people actually get infected than there it than they are by you know going to a random site or things such as that because a lot of people are kind of used to that by now so that is it for this episode of uh, Windows 10 security uh, versus Linux Mint security. I think once you start using Linux on a regular basis, um, knowing that the majority of the problems and headaches that most people have with viruses, malwares, and so forth, they're just really not existent, or at least not you know, widely available at all uh, on the Linux platform, okay? So if you had any comments and ideas be sure to leave them below and if you actually found value in these videos that i'm making be sure to leave a thumbs up as well and don't forget i am on snapchat at geek outdoors thanks for watching thanks for checking out this episode and as always if you like these videos be sure to click on the subscribe button and for full written content audio content and additional geek stuff head over to geekoutdoors.com and i'll see you outdoors on the very next episode